we move on to question four, which goes like this. Could you please explain unconscious intentionality? I'm having difficulty understanding how intention can be unconscious. When I think of being intentional or doing things with intention, I'm conscious of it. I know you are. We all are. We all think we are. That's uh, the, the great surprise, uh, starting with Sigmund Freud, who, f who first introduced the idea that we think we are masters of our mental house, but in fact we are not. Uh, we think that uh, what we do uh, is governed by conscious intentions, but in fact uh, what we do is governed by intentions in many instances of which we know nothing in consciousness. In other words, we have unconscious intentions, which is what the uh, uh, source of this uh, uh, question um, is. What do, you, what, what, is the, what do you mean by unconscious intentions? That's not how I experience it. Well, yes, it isn't how you experience it, um, and you've learned something new, that the way you experience it isn't the way that it is. Now, what's the evidence for that? It, it, Freud started um, over 100 years ago with very simple evidence derived from post-hypnotic suggestion. Uh, that is, the patient is placed under in, in a hypnotic trance. While they're under hypnosis, they're told, um, when I wake you up, you must do such and such. Uh, then the person is, is brought out of the trance and they then do such and such. But when the hypnotist asks that person, why did you do what you just did? Because they were under hypnosis and therefore don't have conscious access to uh, what they were instructed to do during the hypnotic trance, they don't know why they're doing what they're doing. So they make up an explanation as to why they're doing what they're doing. That's what we all do. We make up explanations all the time for what we do, but those explanations are not necessarily veridical. They don't necessarily really account for why we're doing what we're doing. So people in the audience can see why the hypnotized subject did what they did. They're just following the unconscious instruction, uh, but the, the subject of that action has no knowledge of it. That's the sort of paradigmatic um, evidence for unconscious intentionality, but there's many other um, instances of that drawn from other sort of methodological traditions. And I spoke to you about the famous case of uh, the patient of Claparet, um, who uh, refused to shake his hand uh, because the day before she had had the unpleasant experience of being pricked with a pin uh, when she shook his hand. She doesn't consciously remember that. But unconsciously, she does remember that. So unconsciously, she makes the decision, she forms the intention, I am not going to shake this bugger's hand. Um, uh, but uh, she doesn't know consciously this is what her intentionality is. So she comes up with this general explanation, does a lady not have the right to withhold her hand from a gentleman? Uh, she has the reference to this general sort of semantic cultural rule, and she thinks that's why she's doing it. But it isn't why she's doing it. We, uh, those of us who have conscious memory of the events, know that um, she, she's, she's doing it for reasons quite other than what she thinks. Uh, she's doing it for reasons of, uh, uh, for intentions which are unconscious. That's the sort of uh, evidence we have. And if you look at the, the review of all the evidence, and there are oodles of evidence derived from a multiplicity of research traditions, uh, reviewed by Barge and Chartrand, uh, they're sort of like uh, experts in this field, Barge, B-A-R-G-H, and Chartrand's C-H-A-R-T-R-A-N-D. Google their work. Uh, they, um, on the basis of reviewing the evidence, come to the conclusion that something like 90% of our voluntary acts are unconsciously uh, motivated. And I suspect that's probably an overestimation of how much of our intentionality is conscious. I suspect it's less than 10%. But the evidence that they review um, you know, points to the fact not only that we have unconscious intentions, but that most of our intentionality, 90% or more of our intentionality is unconscious. And remember, please, why I'm introducing this third factor um, into my definition of what a mind is is because we had to find some property um, of the mental which is not conscious. And I'm saying that that property of the mental that is not conscious, which nevertheless makes it mental, is that it's intentional. In other words, that it's motivated. In other words, that it has to do with meeting your needs in the world. Um, it has to do um, with our um, with the basic uh, uh, embodied nature of the mind that I've been describing to you. Um, this intentionality, which governs our unconscious 
um, information processing is what distinguishes us from computers and other such non-biological devices. They're processing information galore, and they do it very well, but it's not mental. What they're this information processing and manipulation of facts and figures that computers and cell phones and whatnot uh, uh, are, are capable of are not mental acts because they're not intentional. They're unconscious, um, uh, like much of our information processing, but our unconscious information processing is motivated, is intentional, and in this way, um, it's mental. Okay, so thank you very much. Those are the four questions for um, week four, and um, we can now move forward. Thanks a lot.